What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 80 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and today we are back. It's Boxing Day 2024 and well we are going to be taking on today Nottingham Forest who currently sit bottom of the table. A team predicted to be finishing 8th this year, one place above where we are now. And, uh, well, they've won one game so far in their first 17. Uh, it's the late kickoff on Boxing Day, so we can see that everyone else has played. And a win for us today could see us climb as high as 7th, which would obviously be a great position to go into, um, just coming up to just shy of the halfway point in the season. Anyway, in terms of what's been going on, I talked last episode about the takeover. I guess that's what people will be most interested in. And, uh, well, if we can have a look here, you can see, obviously, Consortium, uh, they were rumoured to be interested, and uh, that a transfer embargo was put in bo on board of course this rumor kind of circulated midway through november uh, this news item came through on the 20th of december um, so formal interest uh, in the club in terms of the ownership of it and it's a cardiff based consortium led by business tycoon dean edwards who intends to spend upwards of 28.5 million pounds in the club which obviously that kind of money I'm not going to say no to. So yes, please, Dean. I kind of hope that takeover goes through. But right now, um, the saga is kind of ongoing. You can see here my chairman, he wanted um, the kind of takeover process to speed up if it's going to happen because right now the transfer window is a problem and we have missed out on a few players um, because of the fact I couldn't confirm the deals. Will Mannion, really the player I was desperate to get in. Um, a big upgrade on Chucky in our goalkeeper position. I had a deal agreed for Will here. It was £5 million with £1.2 million up front and then a, a large chunk of that kind of paid over the four years. I was really happy with it. As you can see, a big upgrade on Chucky, really. An English goalkeeper as well, which is fantastic. And, uh, well, unfortunately, that deal collapsed because, well, with the transfer embargo, I couldn't confirm the transfer. So I need the saga to end soon. He's a player I don't want to miss out on. And, well, with Chucky going out on the African Cup of Nations this year... I am going to be kind of struggling in the goalkeeper department without a kind of ready backup. So I'm hoping that's going to happen. It's a bit unfortunate for me at the moment because obviously with me kind of waiting on what's going on, I can only really twiddle my thumbs. It's worth noting, obviously, um, the fact that we were able to put in bids for players might imply that we have been given some more money to spend. And, well, that is the case. Um, I asked the board for an increased transfer budget. They gave me £15 million to spend. I put some of that into our wage budget to make it so that we were no longer spending more than our wage budget. That left me with... £8 million, as you can see here. And well, with a club balance of £34.5 million, we're in quite a nice spot right now. But um, obviously, with all the different takeover kind of shenanigans going on, I can only really sit and kind of focus on, I guess, on what's going on on the pitch for now until I know exactly where the club's going to be kind of come January over the next few weeks. But anyway, since the last episode, we have only played four games. Of course, Manchester United humbled us last time out. Since then, we drew 0-0 against West Brom. A very disappointing result, this one, because West Brom, they are second from bottom in the league ahead of um, Nottingham Forest. Concert got the Man of the Match award. The former West Brom player kind of doing a very good performance the centre-half against his former club. The next game we had against Arsenal, definitely the pick of the results in this run of form. 3-0 win. Yes, this was a great performance. We played better than them. We created a lot more chances. You can see here, Jamie Price missed a penalty, and then he scored a penalty a minute later. A little bit crazy, the sequence of events that happened there. He did grab another goal just two minutes later, and a handy goal that happened just before half-time um, was what kind of sealed us the win. It finished 3 Nil. Jamie Price had a great game. Dean Clancy, man of the match. Both centre-backs had great games this match. You can see both on 9.0s. But Dean Clancy, he got 33 interceptions in this game. He was a, an absolute beast for us and really did nullify the Arsenal attack. And, well, you can't ask for more than that. A great clean sheet, of course. In the next game, we had away from home against West Ham. Tricky game. We lost it 2-0. It was... Bit, I don't want to say it was a close game. It wasn't really. It was a, one of those games where we just didn't really turn up. We were kind of the away side. We didn't look at that up for it. And in the end, West Ham deserved that 2-0 lead. Anyway, the most recent game we played, 0-0. Unfortunately for us, Kelly couldn't play in this game because, of course, he's in on loan from Watford and there's a clause in his loan that says he can't play for us. Uh, Alfie Mawson, standout performer, got man of the match. Fair play to him, the 30-year-old centre-back. Again, another defender getting a man of the match uh, kind of award for us. And, of course, worth noting, that was a 
third clean sheet in four games. It's a little bit of a shame, though, that two of those clean sheets came in nil-nil draws, I guess. But, well, today, taking on Nottingham Forest, an interesting task at hand because, well, they are a team who they probably should be doing a little bit better than they are, and they're going to be looking to bounce back against us today. As you can see, Ryan Giggs is their manager. Um, he joined, actually, just at the start of this month. He's only been at the club 15 days. So a big bit of pressure on him to try and turn around the fortunes of the club. You can see, actually, since he's joined the team, they've lost three games in a row against Southampton, Bournemouth and West Ham. All three teams that we've actually lost to this year, so can't read too much into that. Of course, with our league form, it's been fairly patchy, but, well, we sit in the top half of the table, which is where we want to be, and this game in hand could be a pretty important game for us. You may have noticed in the FA Cup there, we've got Ipswich, not the most exciting of ties for the third round. Hopefully, we can go on a little cup run. I guess that's got to be the aim there. Uh, in terms of our team for today's game, I do need to make a few changes in the centre of the midfield, because we are struggling um, with some fitness, and, well, it's not entirely surprising. It's that kind of time in the English football season where people are, are expecting players to just play day in and day out and uh, well it takes its toll doesn't it so we've got to mix things up so uh, that is going to mean a start for Tom Davies playing deep line playmaker definitely not a Premier League quality player but the best option we have in that role at the moment uh, and also Strain going to play the left kind of centre midfielder uh, role for us with Mulhall out on the right Looking at the rest of the team, the back four is Chucky. Uh, left back, we're going to go with Gums. I think we're going to persist with Mawson at centre-back. He only really came into the team in the last game uh, as a result of a bit of rotation just because of how frequent the fixtures have been as of late. But with that kind of really solid 8.6 rated performance against Watford, I'm going to give him the nod. I'm going to give him another chance today to see what he can do because he is a pretty well-suited centre-back, a player with loads of experience, played 14 games in the league last year, so it's not like he's a new player to the Premier League. And also, he's a former Nottingham Forest player, so I'm hoping he can give a good performance today against his former club. On the right-hand side, we're going to go with Dean Clancy. Alongside him, we go with Nathaniel Klein. Uh, you'll notice that his contract has been extended by a year. Uh, I forgot to mention this, actually, I think, in the first episode of the se season, but with Nathaniel Klein and Ryan Betray and I've got deals basically involved whereby um, if they play, I think it's 15 or 20 league games uh, for the season, they get contract extensions for another year. And I feel like both players have probably warranted an extra year on their contracts. They've both done fairly good jobs for us so far. So Klein going to hold down his right back position. Uh, Ryan Bertrand uh, is going to be on the bench for us. So he is an option there if we need it. Anyway, in the attacking third, we're going to go with Marshall. Uh, alongside him, we're going to go with, I think, Price playing the advanced playmaker role. At the moment, I've got Gray playing there, but I'm actually going to change that out. Uh, the reason for that being is, of course, as I mentioned, Kelly. He wasn't available for the last game against Watford because, of course, he's in on loan from them. Um, but he's going to play the complete forward role for us alongside Jamie Price. So we're kind of going with that trio who had a really, really good start to the season. Um, it would be fair to say that they've tailed off as of late. But um, I am going to kind of harp on about this. You guys will know at the start of the season, I said if both Jamie Price and Kevin Kelly get double figures, we'll stay up. Well, Jamie Price has got 10 goals. Kevin Kelly has nine. So uh, coming up to the halfway stage, we may have already hit the goal that I thought we needed to do if we wanted to stay up this year. You can see here looking at the betting odds, we are the favourites. A win for us could see us move as high as seventh. Kevin Kelly, our key player today. Their player, Dom Nech. I'm going to go with that as his name. That's probably not how you say it, but uh, a very good kind of Spanish goalkeeper here. Uh, 34 years old, been at the club a number of years. Uh, I assume that includes when they were in the championship, having been relegated from the Premier League previously. Uh, of course, it's worth noting that Nottingham Forest, they are owned by a tycoon, or at least they were last time I checked. They have a lot of money, and they're a team expected to do very good things. And well, the last time we met them, we were both championship sides two years ago. Today... I want to get a bit of revenge. I want to see us put in a good performance. You know, in our last four games, three clean sheets is great. Just the one win, though. I mean, it was in the hardest game of this run of kind of games against Arsenal. These are the kind of games we need to win. If we want to get a top half finish, we need to be beating the likes of Forest, who have been really woeful this year. They're going to be low on confidence. And while we want to punish them, and well, with finishes like that from Mr. Strain. We're going to we're gonna get a win here. That is a lovely goal by James Strain in the first five minutes. I don't think you can blame the keeper one little bit. Bit of build-up play out wide. Goes inside to Strain the left centre. Midi drifts inside. And the Australian, he unleashes a pile driver. That might be his first ever goal for Hereford. Of course, a player who joined us back when we were in the Championship. Didn't play a whole host of games there. But um, nice little bit of build-up play. Drifts inside onto that right peg of his. Hits it. 
And it, well, it rifles into that top corner. Keeper, no chance. He can't be faulted for it. And, uh, well, in what was a, a bit of a potentially tricky game here against Nottingham Forest away from home, we get the ideal start. A lovely finish by Strain, and, well, we'll be looking to build off that now. Obviously, Forrester team low on confidence. Ryan Giggs has come in to try and reinvigorate them. I'm sure they would have looked at this game as an opportunity to try and get a good result, because we have struggled as of late. And, uh, well, unfortunately, as far as Nottingham Forest will be concerned, they've got a goal down early on. And, well, you can see here, 25 minutes gone. We've dominated possession. Forrest yet to have a shot on goal at all. And, really, it's just key now that while we're on top in this game, we try and extend this lead. Anyway, Jamie Price, he's been a naughty boy. Uh, he gets off with a warning, though. I was worried he was going to get a red card randomly there. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen a striker just lose his cool and get a red card. But fortunately, just a stern telling off. It's worth noting, actually, a fair few players booked for Forrest already. Although, I guess that doesn't make a massive difference, at least at the moment, as they are the team bringing it forward. Gonzalez, lovely build-up play here. It's a lovely goal. I almost want to applaud it. It was a great passing move. In the end, it's uh, Alan Eiling uh, with the goal for them. But nice build-up play here, pinging it from side to side. Gonzalez to Atsu, passes it across. I mean, maybe Chucky could do better. I think that's a little harsh. Defensively, we're a, in a bit of a mess. And, uh, well, Forrest, with their first shot on target, they get straight back into this game and make it 1-1. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's a case of when we're on top in a game like we have been, we really need to capitalise on that. We need to really assert our dominance. We need to show that we deserve to be kind of, you know, more than the one goal ahead. And unfortunately, you know, we've maybe had a good spell of the game early on, but this goal for... Forrester really reinvigorated them. And they come up again and Chucky, I mean, he should have stopped it. It's gone over the line somehow. It's an own goal by the goalkeeper, a player who, as I mentioned, might be getting replaced in the not-so-distant future, although he has actually signed a new deal that removed his release clause because I do think he could still be a backup goalkeeper for us. A bit of a mess here, shambolic stuff. Uh, in the end, I, I mean, I don't know if it was a Chucky own goal. It like Borgia maybe fouled him to get it over the line, but ultimately... The end result is the same. Nottingham Forest 2-1 up. And, uh, well, we have been struggling. I think we have one win in our last seven games, which is not good form at all. And this is the kind of game you look at when you look at your fixture schedule and you go, yes, this is a game we can win, particularly, you know, when you look at the league table. And, well, unfortunately for us, at least at the moment, two Nottingham Forest shots have both found the back of the net, or at least one of them did. The second one definitely didn't find the back of the net. It barely went over the line. And, uh, well, we have to step things up here in the second half. And we need to, you know, step up just as a whole. The whole performance needs to take a no whole other level. And, well, that's what we're going to be looking to do here. Mulhall with the ball. Kevin Kelly. We had good spells in the first half. We just didn't quite create enough clear-cut chances. If we can do that, we'll be in a good position. As the ref does play an advantage there. Now with Kelly cleared away. Ailing. Mawson nods it on. Now with Ramsey. Ailing. Crosses it and Borger looked offside. He's not offside. Forrest have had three shots. They've all found the back of the net. And, uh, well, I think it's time to make some panicked changes. I say panic changes. They're not actually going to be panicked, but we do need to mix things up here. I'm going to bring on Gray for Tom Davies out on the left-hand side. And then we're going to play Strain and Mulhall in the centre of the midfield, I think. Um, we're going to change shape, we're going to go to the 4-2-3-1, the narrower system. I don't want to say it hasn't worked today, because I think for the most part it has, but it has left us a little bit open at the back. And, um, well, hopefully this change in system is going to see a stretch Forest out wide, really punish them uh, in the gaps that they are going to have in their team, because they are playing a flat 4-4-2, and I feel like with our three attacking midfielders in this 4-2-3-1, there is space for them to kind of run into within that pocket of space. The, um, well, the Forest midfield and defence will be, be kind of sat in between. But anyway, the fortunate thing, I guess, in some respects is we have 35 minutes to try and turn this around. It's not like Forest have gone two goals to the good with not long left. But, well, we need to deal with this here and we haven't dealt with it. Forest are 4-1 up. And, uh, well, we struggled of late. And we're struggling again here. And it looks like for a second time in a live con we could get spanked. And, to be honest... This is one of those games which is just a freak of nature. They've had five shots, four of them have gone in, and only two of them have been clear-cut chances. It's just a head-scratcher. I know it's not really a viable excuse, or it just certainly shouldn't be seen as an excuse, but defensively we have been poor in this game. I'm going to bring on Konzer and move Clancy out to right-back, although he can't actually play right-back. He is a right-footed player who can play left-back. It's the same stuff, it's just on the other side. Easy peasy for you. It's even on his stronger foot. 
Um, but yeah, Klein has had a torrid time today. You'd have to say Jamie Price definitely not had a game to remember either. And unfortunately for us, with 20 minutes left, I mean, this game's just game over, isn't it? We have been put to the sword, not necessarily by a team that have performed better, but by a team that have taken their chances better. And uh, perhaps this highlights a need for, if we do want our aspirations this year to be a top half finish, um, we, we, we really need to press and try and improve the squad in a few different areas. Um, I'm looking at the, the you know the midfield as a place that I'd like to improve, maybe um, you know a little bit more in the way of a defend another defender. How many might have a chance here? He probably should have scored it as well. It's a nice stop by the Forest side, but um, I mean still it's just a it's a demotivating result because I kind of look at it from kind of our perspective. Yes, we've conceded more clear cut chances than perhaps I would have liked. In fact, we have conceded more than I'd liked, and in reality, we haven't created enough. But you'd have to say, we dominated possession, we had more shots. On another day, you know, a little bit more clinicalness or a bad day at the office for Nottingham Forest, this is a very, very different game. And, well, unfortunately for us, it's an embarrassing result. Forest, a team who had only won one game going into this, taking on us a side who only won one in our previous seven. And, uh, well, I did not expect a result of that manner. That was just simply put, not acceptable. It sees us you know, languish down in ninth now, which of course it's still a good position to be in. Realistically, I look at our squad, I still think just avoiding relegation has got to be the the ultimate aim. But, um, well, it's just not really acceptable. You can see Liverpool beat Southampton 6-0. Gums revealed our fury. Um, kind of looking at our form, it's a little bit of bleak reading now, isn't it? We've got Man City coming up next. We've got then got the games against Brighton, Liverpool, Tottenham. I think the game we might be back for next time may be the Huddersfield game or maybe the Palace game. We'll see how things pan out. I think uh, one of those games could be fairly interesting, particularly the way that things are going at the moment. We are kind of slowly slipping down the table. And uh, so it might be important to do a game against someone like Huddersfield who are down in 14th because that could be the kind of game that we look at as a, a must-win game, of course, against a team who got promoted with us. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Not the result we wanted. We need to sort out our form because it has been really bad as of late. I thought we were on the mend. I thought three clean sheets in our last four, just one defeat in our last four. You know, maybe maybe this is now where we can really kind of build a foundation and go off it. And, uh, well, I feel like we've just been kicked back to square one now with that defeat against Forrest. And uh, obviously, January is going to be a big month for us. Hopefully, the transfers can be done. Hopefully, obviously... Um, the the deal goes through, I guess, with the club, or at least a, a settlement is decided as to whether or not the club is going to be sold during January. So I do actually have, you know, the ability to spend some of the money we, we have. Of course, £8 million probably normally wouldn't seem like that much to have to spend in January. Uh, but when you consider the amount of money we had to spend so far in this season, and that was just £5 million to try and get a club ready for the Premier League um Perhaps that money can be spent very wisely and we can really build off our current squad and add some substantial strength. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Hopefully you did enjoy as always. If you did, please do leave a like on the video. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.